All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Trading Bitcoin with your host, Tom Vase. How's everyone doing this morning? Finally made it to the woods. Uh, this is where I usually am during the summer. It's uh, just been a really busy, uh, more busy summer than usual. But those of you that have watched this channel for a while know that I have my little hideout. And this is where we are uh, for the rest of the week. So this is where I would like, <laughs> this is where I would go if shit is hitting the fan in, uh, in the United States. Uh, the famous machete and axe picture came from uh, these woods back here. All right, I don't see anyone in the live chat. Where is everyone? Everybody hear me okay? Hey guys. Is there, oh, there you all are. Yeah, it's nice. Here, I'll show you. I do have a, like a 30 minute cutoff time today. I have to, uh, I like it. The camera should be following me around. Why is the camera not following me around? Is it locked in place? There we go. Now it's falling. Around. There we go. All right. Here we are. I can move over a little bit. And uh, be able to see plenty of firewood over this way. Uh, maybe a little more. There it is. Does get a little cold here in the winter. Oh. All right, let's go to the charts. Let's see what a disaster we have in store for us. Are you homeless? Yes. What do you mean there's no audio? Really? No, there has to be audio, right? There's audio, right? All right. Oh, really? Your sister is playing in uh, in a World Series of Poker match? Nice. Made day two. Always good. Yeah, I'm officially a bear. Speaking of bears, uh, we do have black bears around here. Uh, so... In case you hear something sneaking up behind me and you see it on camera, <laughs> let me know. So it's also the place of the famous uh, tone trying to set up a minor incident. Okay, let's go to the charts. See what's going on here. See what's going on in this mess. Okay, here we go. Put that right there, actually myself on the camera uh nasty candle weekly candle as you can see we've broken below prior candles low and that puts this low in jeopardy uh one of my uh former consulting clients and users of the mri asked how does this mri support line get calculated and the answer is in the educational video of the mri but I will explain how this video gets calculated, how, how this line gets calculated. The line gets calculated by using the lowest price in a path to an MRI cell. See, this is a path to an MRI cell. The path to an MRI cell starts with this candle because this candle ended the prior MRI, this was the prior MRI cell. So if this is the first candle in the uptrend, and this is the last candle in the uptrend, this line is the lowest price in this uptrend. It will usually come from candle one or two of the uptrend. It's very rare that it would come from another candle. So it's always one or two, but it could also come from a gap. But Bitcoin doesn't gap, so you're not gonna have this problem. In the stock market, however, 
uh, you could have a gap. This is currencies. So we got to go to like US stocks and we got to find the stock that gaps. I don't know, maybe a Tesla or something. And this is a monthly chart. So we can look at a weekly chart, for example. And right here, here is another MRI support line. So if you extend it, it would be the lowest price, probably this one, would be the lowest price in the uptrend that ended with this candle. Um, or the prior candle, if there was a gap. So if there's a giant gap, but I'm not gonna search for an example. If let's say this is the first candle of an uptrend, uh, but we've been going down, 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 and then there was a candle down here, and then there was a huge gap, and then we start going up, this line wouldn't be here, the lowest price of the first candle that started an uptrend. It would be at the closing price of the last candle going down before the uptrend. So, be lower. so in case anyone's wondering where this line came from, and this line is actually super useful, and it also helps you close the gap. Let's go back to the chart. So weekly chart and resistance works the same way. This line represents the prior swing high right there of the downtrend, and we broke it and then couldn't sustain it. I am still completely dumbfounded that this did not lead to higher prices. I know that the, if you look at the oscillators, they were all kind of diverging, but divergence doesn't mean anything until the price has already turned down. So I only started getting concerned when this happened, when we got that first weekly candle below this moving average, that's why I started getting concerned. But then we hit an MRI buy on a weekly scale. So I wasn't that concerned. I was concerned here. And I was concerned again when we could not break the moving average and we had this death cross. So now I'm concerned, very concerned here. And then we break prior support and now all shit hits the fan so but right here at this moment i am as bullish uh let's just say i am more bullish here than i am here but that's how i trade it will occasionally create a bad trade but most of the time i will be right because that also makes me super bullish over here. And then I'm right all the way up. This, th th this I saw coming. This I was able to call a top reasonably well. Uh, this was also a bottom reasonably well. But this here was a complete surprise. What's the point of sound money if most people in the world do not understand it or does not realize its importance? Well, you can say the same thing about the internet, right? Uh, what's the point of the internet when most people don't understand it? You know, back when we had to use a dial-up uh, and uh, now you can say the same thing, you know, in uh, 1996, 97, like, what's the point of the internet if most people don't understand how good it is? Well, eventually people are going to understand. Um, eventually people are going to understand. And we just have to keep building tools. Keep build, building tools to make sound money easier and easier and more important to use. Oscillator is disastrous. On a weekly scale, we now, today is already Thursday. And if this... MRI support line breaks. Guys, I don't see any support anywhere here. We're already in very dangerous territory. I don't see any support on a weekly scale above, you know, 12,000. A lot of people think 14,000 is support. And it's possible support, but it's weak support. 
Um, I would say stronger support is in the $12,000 area. That is way stronger support than the 14. So we actually, I actually just tweeted it out. Hey guys, please follow the Financial Summit Twitter handle. Uh, we're gonna be tweeting out old wisdom from Tyler Jenks. And he literally explains why uh, technical analysis is important. And actually, please follow our YouTube channel. Where is our YouTube channel? All right, I wanna see if we have 300 subscribers. There's gotta be a few hundred people watching. Two of you need to subscribe and then we go on. I'm gonna squeeze like two to three subscribers to this channel. We need to get to a thousand to drop the ads because we don't post much here. I'll start posting a little more, but just requires time. All right, two subscribers, two brave people need to subscribe to the Financial Summit channel. And then we go on with the charts. Thoughts on the EU regulation news. EU is a dying Marxist state. So I really couldn't care less what regulation EU does. Yeah, we all miss Tyler. I know. Yes, we're at 300. Let's go on. Four-day chart. The four-day chart is sitting right at the low. It's an extension C buy. <clears throat> so you can see the reason why we want 100% cash. We were really hopeful that this beautiful hammer candle would rally us at least partially to the top. Unfortunately, it couldn't do it. So we had to you know, cut our losses. We could have gone short, but I really don't like going short. Uh, not, not, not after such a big drop, uh, not after such a big drop. Thanks guys. <clears throat> Thanks for subscribing. Well, it's about to get a little bit scary. It's about to get a little bit scary, man. If you have some dry powder left, if you got some cash, if you got some kidneys to sell, uh, Michael Saylor is buying more. He ain't scared. Stop selling Michael Saylor your Bitcoin. And guys, I am so bullish about Bitcoin into the future. I'm more bullish now than I was at these prices back in, uh, back in 2017. And you know how I'm always bullish at the top. Saylor might have more Bitcoin than Satoshi one day. See, we're still dealing with the yearly MRI sell, and that is nasty. I really didn't think the yearly MRI sell would do this, but clearly I need to trust my own indicator better. That is not good. That is a yearly, that's a potential one to four year correction. And it looks like we're correcting this entire year. This entire year has been a correction. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit rough. How's the six-month chart looking? See, the six-month chart was bullish. What about the quarterly? Well, I don't know if the four-month chart's useful at all. I've never even looked at it. Ooh. Ooh. Why was I not looking at this chart? Look at the four-month chart. Wow. I mean, we did start moving down earlier, but remember, you get the warning candle. You get the warning yellow arrow on the candle before. Bam, we should be following the four month chart with the MRI. Wow. 
Wow. I was always looking at the quarterly chart, which is the three-month chart. Should pay more attention to the four-month chart. Yeah, see, three-month chart did well and well. <clears throat> now we got the first red candle we ever had, red, red star candle we ever had. You know, this might be the worst three months in Bitcoin history. This might be the worst quarter Bitcoin ever had. Let me see. This might be the worst three-month candle. So this candle lost 68%. Okay, maybe it wasn't the worst. This candle lost 37%. This candle lost 45%. And this candle, yeah, I don't think we'll beat 68. 58%. It's the second worst quarter Bitcoin has ever had. Wow. Uh, the quarter ends, quarter ends today. Today is the last day of the quarter. All right. Second worst quarter in the history of Bitcoin. And you've lived through it. You lived through it. Barely. But... Okay, let's move on to the shorter term time frames. I already mentioned the financial summit. Join us in the Dominican Republic. It's going to be absolutely awesome. For those that manage to save some money in the market, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. Man, Instagram. Ah, trying to get to those thousand subs. Thousand followers. Yeah, we post cool, like, fun all the fun stuff we have over there at the event. And Rajabov is in fifth place. He's playing Duda today. Duda's in last place. And he's white, so that gives him a chance. Um, gives him a chance. Got three, three games to go. Three games to go. Rooting for Rajabov. He's a fan of the show and a fan of Bitcoin. This is the Candidates Chess Tournament. Pretty much eight of the top 15 players in the world, winner plays uh, the top player. Daily chart. This was my shit hits the fan line. And since TA doesn't work, this was not supposed to crash the moment it hit the line, but crash it did. And now we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. We are on the verge of making a new daily closing low. And that is disastrous. That is disastrous. Someone is totally going to take the white comment out of context. You know, how close is the Volk um, crazies of uh, changing the chessboard from white black to say, I don't know, green and yellow? No, no, wait, I'm sorry, yellow is also racist. Um, green and red, no, wait, red is also racist. Shit. Um, is green racist? I don't think green is racist, right. So it would be green and what? Purple? Green and purple. Uh, the future chessboard. You heard it on the Tone Base channel first. You heard it on the Tone Base channel first. Uh, the the Vogue crazies are going to try to change the chessboard uh, to green, green and pink. Yes, maybe. Maybe green and pink. Or pink and purple. Or uh, green and purple. Green and blue. I think blue might also be racist. 
Gold, silver, yeah, that might work. Okay, let's move on. So we are on the verge of breaking a new swing low. Yeah, you're right. All colors are um, uh, insensitive to colorblind people. So maybe we can't have colors. Oh, we have an MRI buy on the one hour chart. We have an MRI buy on a one hour chart. That is a good sign. That is potential that the low for the day is upon us. Uh, we're also approaching 10 a.m. So there could be a 10 a.m. reversal in could be a 10 a.m. reversal in the stock market. Uh, GBTC, Barry Silbert, was denied the Bitcoin ETF, which I knew was going to happen. And now Grayscale and Barry Silbert are trying to sue the SEC. So we will see how that goes. Actually, I don't think yellow is racist anymore. I don't think anyone gives a shit about Asians. So the concept of yellow being racist is irrelevant, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so oil pulled back. Wow, look at that. So the pullback in oil is good for uh, inflation. It will keep inflation in check. I'm a little surprised at this big drop in the price of oil. Not sure exactly why. So let's see how the week ends. I'm still bullish on oil price. Gold is sitting right at support. The stock market, the stock market is down big today. Today could be the day of the 10 a.m. reversal. We're going to a 10-minute chart. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing something at 10 a.m. Eh. Damn it. I mean, I might be a few minutes late. Let's go to a 10-minute chart on Bitcoin as well. We're on the hourly MRI buy as well. Got a, oh, these extension Cs don't really matter on a 10 minute chart. Ooh, let's switch to a five minute chart. 10 a.m.'s coming, we're five minutes away. We're five minutes away from the 10 a.m. reversal. Today is the day that I would, as a trader, this is the day I really want to see because from the open, we have fallen 30 points. I will definitely be taking a swing at the 10 a.m. reversal. Am I on a five-minute chart? I'm not. And 10 a.m. is coming. We're four minutes away. We are four minutes away. So I would be sitting there with my finger on the buy trigger in the S&P futures. See, Bitcoin has already found its low. That's actually a goodish sign that the S&P is about to reverse at 10 a.m. So what I would do is if the next candle starts trading above current candle, I would be going long.
But if the next candle is lower than current candle, I would move my entry to the top of that candle. So like, I don't want to catch a falling knife. I want to buy it on the way up and set my stop loss at the low. So welcome to the life of a trader. You just sit there and count. Oh, look at that. See, we're rallying. Starting to rally here. We're coming into 10 a.m. Remember, we're already down. And at market open, the first impression was it's going to be an update. And this is why you never trade market open. Market open is so hard to trade. If you thought it was going to go down at market open, you got in, you got stopped out. If you thought it was going to go up into 10 a.m., you also got crushed. Okay. I am long on this line. We're already two minutes away. So I don't care if it happens next candle or current candle. Um, the moment we touch my line, I am long in this market. This is the 10 a.m. reversal. If I was on a Lower level time frame, I might have already gotten in. If I was on, let's say, three minutes, but I don't like three minutes. I like five and 10 minutes. So I know I probably already missed a 10 point move, but that's okay. Seven point. That's okay. The moment we touch my line, I'm long in this market. I'm, I'm long in the market, pretty much. I'm now long in this market. We have two minutes, still two minutes to go. Two minutes early, but that's okay. But we definitely touched my line now. So I'm long in this market. Where am I setting my stop loss? Well, it's very, very easy. I'm setting my stop loss below the swing low. But I might give myself 10 minutes, but I doubt it. I'm setting the stop loss below the swing low. I might give it a little bit of wiggle room below that swing low. As you can see, I got in a little bit early. I got in one candle early, even though I'm on five minutes. Really wanted it to break my line next candle, not this candle, but that's okay. But I got to get off the stream as well. This trade isn't easy. I used to, I, this is how I, I used to trade this. Uh, it's not a good start to the next candle. This is the 10 a.m. candle. This is the candle I'm expecting to be the reversal. And as luck would have it, because I'm live streaming, we're going to hit my stop loss and then reverse. I'm actually going to give it a little more wiggle room. A little more wiggle room. I don't mind this candle being the swing low and then reverse. But after that, I'm cutting my losses. I can try again at 11 a.m. if it also gives me the low. I would not double down. Either my trade works or it doesn't. These are five minute candles. And now my goal is to move up that stop loss as quickly as possible. It's only 10.01 a.m. New York time. You can see how it's already slowing down its drop. I'm fairly confident I should have been more patient. I should have got in on current candle, not the candle before. I got in a little bit early. I got impatient. That's okay. This is, we're looking at the 10 a.m. candle. No, I don't pay attention to the MRI buy on low time frames all that much. Uh, 
the 10 a.m. reversal is generally trumps uh, the MRI. I wasn't even paying attention to it. Yep, there goes the stop loss. We can still have the 10 a.m. reversal. We're still in the 10 a.m. candle. I'll see how this candle plays out. I may try it one more time if this candle starts to reverse. We could also go straight down. This could also be the worst day in history for the stock market. We're already down 40 points off the start. That is a horrendous day for the stock. And we are looking at a 10 a.m. candle right now. Now, if we reverse on the 10 a.m., uh, like the candle right after 10 a.m. candle, these are just five-minute candles. Uh, we will reverse with the MRI. Well, I'm not really, I'm not literally trading at the moment. I'm doing a live stream. I use interactive brokers. I'm not going to have that open while I'm live streaming. And I don't day trade anymore. That was what I used to do before I started YouTubing. I got to jump on a call, actually. I'm delaying it by 10 minutes. Yeah, see, that's the 10.05 candle. I will try this again. Probably at the break of this candle's high. Same concept. Stop loss would be below the candle. We'll try it again. Make up for the losses. See, look, Bitcoin's rallying. Bitcoin never made a new low. That gives me a little more confidence that some buyers are going to step up. At least I'm short sellers going to step up. I can actually lower my entry a bit. Stop loss shouldn't be there because I'm not in the trade. The MRI buy is coming too. That would help. If this is a red candle, that's actually great. There's one more shot as we go above that candle. But after that, I'm not, the 10 a.m. is going to be gone. Like this is the 10 a.m. candle. These are five-minute candles. I used to like 10-minute candles. So on 10-minute candles, this is still the 10 a.m. candle. But after that, I'm going to wait till 11 a.m. And then try one more, and then maybe try one more time. And that's it. So just for the hell of it, I'm going to go long. How much time we got? Can I just, I'm going to go long now. Same concept. I'm going long now. And after this candle ends, I'm going to set my stop loss below those, <clears throat> those two candles. Right now, my stop loss is giving me some extra wiggle room. But the moment this candle ends and the next candle goes above current candle, I will set my stop loss to below those two candles. And I also need to make up for the loss that I already have in order to have a profitable day. What's this 10 a.m., 11 a.m. thing? It was a trading strategy that I employed 
and used to make money as a day trader. It was my favorite day trading strategy. I would only trade two to three hours a day. And by the end of the week, I would make money. I didn't make money every day, but I made more money than I lost by end of week. markets in my i mean look i i was doing this five years ago i was doing this for like several for like a year or two uh several years ago and in my research markets reverse at around 10 a.m uh more often than they statistically should so i would take advantage of that trade and the best way to take advantage of that trade is in the futures markets but futures markets are leveraged 10 to 1, 10 to 1, 50 to 1. Uh, yeah, day trading can be stressful. If you don't have proper risk management, yes, very stressful. But if you have a $100,000 account and you're putting uh, you know, 1% of that account at risk per day, it's not that stressful. So I'm waiting for this candle to end so I can safely move my stop loss to below the swing lows. And I really need to jump on this um, other thing. Um, I want to jump. Okay, guys, if you want to know where I'm jumping on, it's um, uh, how do I? I'll put it in the live chat here. Uh, hold on. Here. Uh, there is a AMA. Copy a link. I'm putting it in the live chat. So I promised I would listen to the AMA. Uh, and this isn't a telegram. It's uh, Embly. Uh, Embly's uh, the CEO of Embly. And you guys know I like Embly. So if you go to Tone Vase uh, affiliate page, Tone Vase affiliates, um, you should see Embly somewhere here. There is Embly. I like Embly because they, they, they do awesome custom debit cards, Bitcoin debit cards. So they're doing an AMA on Telegram, and I promised I'd be there, and it started 10 minutes ago. So I need to jump in. Need to jump in there. All right, where's the chart at? So the candle has ended. There's the MRI buy, so that helps. I'm now, I've now raised the stop loss uh, to the bottom of those candles. The last thing I need is another losing trade. I already had a losing trade today, so the last thing I need is a second one. So once this candle ends as a new high, my goal is to get this stop loss to be break even. And then worst case scenario, I only had one losing trade and that's it. I don't want to have two losing trades. Futures are leveraged 50 to one. Uh, but I'm also not ready to take my profit yet. I would need at least a 10 point move to take profit and we didn't have a 10 point move. Probably should have been more patient with my initial entry. But I did get in the second time around the same time I got out the first time. So I just saved myself a little bit of stress. Again, these things are leveraged 50 to 1. Stop losses right at the swing low. Depending, if this candle ends green, my stop loss is going up no matter what. I'm moving it up inch by inch by inch until it becomes a break even. And then if I'm lucky, today is such a bullish day that it closes green. 
on the day. I'll stick around till the end of this candle and then we're going to call it a day. Guys, join us at the Financial Summit in the Dominican Republic one month away. Exactly one month away. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram. I may be giving away a discount. You really want to follow us on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I want some Instagram followers. So I may, we may do a post on Instagram uh, that would uh, give people a nice discount, but they have to provide some value. Like they have to be a trader or willing to present something. Like present a trading strategy or a research idea in the markets, something like that. Okay, here we go. So the 10 a.m. reversal worked. See, this is literally the 10 a.m. candle. I was a little cavalier because I wanted to get off the stream at 10 a.m. So like an idiot, I went in two to three minutes early. And that was my mistake. That wasn't the, that wasn't the trading plan mistake. Literally the 10 a.m. candle, we can go to the one minute chart and we can see which candle made the low. The 1003 candle, the closing low was a 1002 candle. See, I got in at like here um, at 958. So I literally uh, got very impatient and I couldn't wait three to four more minutes uh, to properly enter the 10 a.m. trade. The proper time to enter the 10 a.m. trade is right after 10 a.m., not before 10 a.m. So the trade was good. My execution was a little faulty, but I stuck with it. I knew that I entered prematurely and I, you know, recovered. So this is, uh, so this is the kind of stuff I used to like teach. Now you're getting it for free on my YouTube channel. So there is a 10 a.m. trade. The MRI helped, but I wasn't looking at that. And once the scandal ends, uh, it's up to you. Do you want to take some profit? You can make up for that loss. Uh, had I been looking at lower level time frames, I could have gotten a little bit better. There it is. There it goes. There it goes. Once this thing moves, you know, 10 points in my direction, you can definitely take some profit. That was the entry. You know, it already moved 9.6. Well, pretty much 10, 9.9, right? It's up to you at this point. You know, the world's your oyster now. You can take a little bit of profit. It moved 10. That's usually a thousand or two thousand uh, dollars. And you can definitely, I'm definitely setting a break even stop loss either on everything or a break even stop loss on the rest. There's no way in hell this trade is going to cost me money. All right. Futures are the most liquid asset in the world. It will not have slippage. It will get you out exactly where you set your stop loss. But I got to run. I got to join that Emily AMA. Uh, now you guys saw how the 10 a.m. reversals work. Uh, execution could be a little bit better. But this is, this is how I used to try. I used to be much better execution because I used to do it every day. So thank you all for watching, guys. Uh, Bitcoin is in a bit of trouble, a shit ton, actually. Um, so let's hope the stock market reverses off of this 10 a.m. and goes to new all-time highs, and that will drag Bitcoin up along with it. All right. Thank you all for watching, guys, and see you all on the next one.